Ladies and gentlemen, my first guests are the stars of one of this year's biggest Hollywood blockbusters. I am thrilled they're here. They're from Spider-Man 3. It's Kirsten Dunst and Toby Maguire. <laughs> hey, Toby, how are you? Kirsten, you look beautiful. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you, Spider-Man! This is the third time Toby has played Spider-Man, and he's such a method actor that Kirsten has to get him out of his Winnebago using a huge glass and a piece of card. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a... <laughs> well, f*** you too! I don't... <laughs> It was a bad joke, wasn't it? But there'll be more of that <laughs> yeah. later on, so look forward to it. Uh, I'm delighted that it's my dear hit. I think so. Please welcome Kirsten Dunst and Toby Maguire. Before we, before we sit down, can I weigh you? I want to see what celebrities you weigh like. Come over here. Don't worry, I'm not going to... Can I weigh you, then? You have already weighed me. I'm Eric Bristow. OK, let's see. I don't see. know stones. Yeah, let's see. You are... No, it's not in stones. You are halfway between Danny DeVito... <laughs> ..and Stephen Hawking, like it says. That's <laughs> With or without the chair. OK, thank you, Kirsten. <laughs> Mr Maguire, come on, let's find out who you weigh... Half of John Candy. He's <laughs> half of John Candy. <laughs> well, that's how you join it in. That's, uh... <laughs> That must be one of the strangest ways you've been welcome onto a show, I would imagine. I like it. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, thank you for coming on. I've, I've seen the new Spider-Man movie. I'm a big Spider-Man fan anyway. I don't want to freak you out here, but I know just about everything there is to know about Spider-Man, in particular the first 150 issues. Wow. <laughs> After that, I get a bit fuzzy. Right. But I'm pretty good. You know good. more than me. I probably know more yeah. than both of you combined, and I'm proud of that fact. I've loved them all my life, but you don't have to know about them to be in the movies. Um, but I'm thrilled because the film is so good. I mean, all three of them are great, but this is such a cracking film. And I saw it with my kids, and my, my little girl loves it. She loves the romance aspect of it. My little boy loved it. I loved it as well. We all went home very happy. So thank you very much thank indeed. You. you can go now. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, now, here's the thing, though. It seemed to take a long time between uh, Spider-Man number two and Spider-Man number three. I felt like I was waiting for far too long. Mm. Did it take longer to make than the other two, or was it just my imagination? I had other movies to make. So you were busy on other films? We had to wait for her. Was that really, is that the case? No. No, it, it, it was uh, a little less than three years between the release of two and three. And uh, we didn't have, we had to start from, we had to start fresh after we released the second one. So we had to, you know, come up with a story, write a script, yeah. pre-production, the effects, all that stuff, shoot it, edit it, put it out. Yeah, but it did. The boys it, had to get in shape. Did you get out of shape? Because yes. I saw some pictures of you looking quite <coughs> poorly. <Yeah. laughs> it happens to us all, brother. I'm not casting any. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of mm. let it go there. Yeah. What a nice feeling, though, eh? It was good. It was good. Because I remember the first film, because you were, you were walking around with your shirt off the whole time, and I thought, here's a young man who's got in shape for a movie. He's, obviously, it's the part requires it. Yeah. But you were proud as punch of your new physique. Yeah, of course I was. You know, it took, uh, took me like seven months to get that. Wow, it must have felt great. It was great. And then it was equally as great eating all those donuts and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we talk more about Spider-Man, and we will do, and, and unfortunately for you, I could speak about the film and the books all night long. Do you remember issue 99 when he wakes up and he's grown four extra arms? That's not yeah. true. It is true, in issue 99. And then in issue 100, uh, he realises it was some sort of weird trick on his mind. And then 101, he meets Morbius, the living vampire. Anyway. <laughs> Gil Kane? I'm not buying it. It's true! Okay. Don't start. I read the first 100 issues. Well, that's 101. You're too busy stuffing your face with donuts after you've got to Good point. 99, he wakes up with four arms. I'm, I'm telling you, Maguire. I believe you. Yeah, you better. I'm, I'm, Person, yeah, I'm that's all I've got. <laughs> uh, okay, before we talk more about Spider-Man, though, you, you guys have been in uh, the acting profession and in show business for an inordinately long time, longer than most people would, would think. How old were you both when you started in acting? What was your first professional acting job, Kirsten? Oh, a kick cereal commercial, probably. About how old would you have been then? Four or five. Wow. And, and you, you acted fairly solidly, didn't you? All through your, your, the, the youth there and I, I did commercials when I was younger, and then I did Interview with the Vampire, which made me famous. What? But that was a remarkable film. I don't know if you remember seeing Kirsten that. Obviously, that's her on the right there. On the left <laughs> is, is uh, a young Brad Pitt. Um, but that was a, a remarkable performance. Thanks. You know, especially for a young My best one. Actor. No, I, no, I don't think so necessarily. Yeah, yeah, you've done I'm some good. Oh, you were joking. Self-deprecating. <laughs> That's unusual in Americans. Self-deprecation. Yeah, yeah, it is quite unusual, isn't it? <laughs> Toby. 
Toby's we still trying to come back with the zinger about issue 99. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Toby, you were in a McDonald's advert, I believe. I was. But you are now uh, a staunch vegetarian. I am. Were you a vegetarian at the time? No. Ah, I see. Was it doing the advert that turned you on to vegetarianism? <laughs> you, might, you might think it could be, but, but it was not the case. Did you meet Hamburglar? <laughs> I have a Hamburglar action figure. I loved Hamburglar. In my kitchen, you, he's my favorite too. Where is Hamburglar now? I don't know. I don't know. I never met him. Yeah. I wasn't really asking you where he was. I, I, <laughs> I didn't expect really, you to know. I'm, I'm very literal. Kitchen. I'm very literal. Uh, hey, here's a film that you and I loved as well. Uh, and I think you made this after you first appeared in Spider-Man. Seabiscuit. I don't know if you saw Toby and Seabiscuit, but it was a tremendous film. Um, was that after Spider-Man 2 or before Spider-Man 2 that you made that? That was uh, between Spider-Man 1 and 2. Okay, and presumably there you had to lose even more weight, I would have thought. I had to lose a lot of weight in that movie, yeah. I didn't think I would enjoy that movie as much as I did because uh, uh, jockeyism, I'm not sure if it's that the correct phrase for being a jockey. I never heard it before. Yeah, it's not something that had excited me in the past. And yet when I saw it, I thought, I love this jockey action. Yeah. And I was quite hoping that the success of Seabiscuit would bring about a whole wave of jockey movies. Yeah, it didn't happen. At the very least, I, I was I, hoping I'm you would sign I'm, on for Seabiscuit 2. I'm just curious about what you like about the jockey action. <laughs> Small men in caps, what's not to like? <laughs> uh, did you actually learn to ride a horse at that level, at that kind of speed? I did, yeah. How do you do that? Do you actually go out and just learn it, or you, there's a training process that you go through? Yeah, I, I worked with um, a Hall of Fame jockey, Chris McCarron, and, and I worked on this machine at home called the Equisizer, which is what jockeys use to rehab or to train. So you actually have, so what, is it like a fake horse or something? Or? Yeah, basically. So you have a horse, like, in your front room? <laughs> yeah, like a mechanical horse. Wow, that yeah. sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Can you do it while you're watching TV and stuff and, uh, and other jobs, like getting your email and stuff, or do you yeah. have to focus on it? It's, it's pretty hard, so that, that that would be a real lazy man's workout. Wow. Uh, and do you still have your mechanical horse? No, I got rid of my mechanical horse. About the time the donuts were delivered? <laughs> <laughs> it did coincide. Would you recommend a mechanical horse to other people wishing to get in shape? Um, not necessarily. <laughs> I have a running machine. I prefer the idea of a horse. <laughs> It's hard work. I mean, you might want to try it. How about a little variety? A little running, a little mechanical horse. You say it's hard work, but you're sitting down, aren't you? True. How hard can it be? <laughs> Surely the mechanical horse is doing most of the work. It's not motorized. Kirsten. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever ridden a mechanical horse? Uh, ever been remotely tempted? No. In between the movies, when you knew what I was up to, did he not say, hey, you won't believe what I've got in my front room? <laughs> <laughs> Come on over. <laughs> Give it a go. No, I, I didn't get that chance. OK. I think we've exhausted the mechanical horse <laughs> for now. Um, you, you got injured, didn't you, during the, during the two movies? I think between Spidey 1 and 2, because I remember reading at the time, and I so loved the first movie and thought you both did such a sterling job. Thank you. And I was looking forward to number two, and then I was reading that maybe you wouldn't be able to appear as Spider-Man again because you'd injured your back. Was that because of Spider-Man the movie? Was it because of Seabiscuit? Was it something else that happened? Well, my, my, I had some back pain in, during Spider-Man 1 and through Seabiscuit, and it got kind of bad at the end of Seabiscuit. And so I, what I had to do is just change some things with my workouts and stretching routines. Oh, but how would it have felt for you then? Because I know that Sam Raimi, I believe, was considering other actors because they, they had to get on with the movie. Did you not hear this, Kirsten? Is this, is this a sensitive subject I'm touching on? <laughs> I, heard they were I feel considering... like I'm on the therapist couch yeah. right now. <laughs> we'll get you in a minute. I'm ready. I'm not scared. <laughs> I've got a mechanical bull. <laughs> Uh, but how did that feel? Because that must have been, I would have thought, uh, a strange thing to hear, that maybe someone else is going to take over a role that you've made your own. I mean, there must have been a chance that they went ahead without you. Um, well, it could have happened. If, if, it was, if, it, if I was unable to do it for, for whatever reason, then, then that would have happened. And, uh, you know, I love working with these guys, Kirsten and the cast and Sam so much that, yeah, it would have been a little sad. But fortunately, it didn't work out that way. That's right. Thank goodness for that. Yeah. Kirsten. Yeah. Hey, now in the movie, I know you best as a blonde. Most of the time you appear in movies and you have the lovely blonde hair. Yeah. Uh, but in the Spider-Man movies, you have, it's more of a ginger, it's a reddish blonde, a Whatever strawberry blonde. Whatever you like, yeah. Okay. Uh, how is that for you, going through life as a blonde and then a redhead? Does it change the way people are with you? 
Yeah, men generally like blondes all over the board, so you attract all different kinds. But red attracts a certain type of man. A slightly more sophisticated gentleman? Perhaps? I would think so, okay. yeah. And do you ever use it socially yourself? Do you think, okay, I'm going to go down to a different color when I go out? No, no, I just, I, I like my red hair, and now I'm back to blonde, but I liked having it. It's a lovely look. I like the, the ginger hair when you have it in there. Thank you. Um, how is it for you guys playing the romance scenes in that movie? Because I know that's part of the appeal, and you wouldn't think necessarily. I mean, I don't know whether that was what persuaded you guys to take on the roles in the first place, but it's a crucial part of the film, isn't it? It's as much about the relationship between you playing Peter Parker and you as a Mary Jane, as it is about the heroics, isn't it? Is that what attracted you? Well, I wanted to, from the very beginning, the fact that uh, Sam Raymond was directing and, and Toby was starring in it, you know, and Toby had been in like Ice Storm and Wonder Boys and these great independent films, and for a studio to hire somebody who wasn't like a huge star already really attracted me, and I read the scenes, and I thought it was beautiful, and we auditioned in Berlin, and it went really well, so. Well, I think they're the best superhero movies ever made, and I don't wow, say that, you know, in a kind of uh, silly Batman's way. Batman's pretty good, too. Yeah, so. but it's not a patch, because Batman, he's a, he's a millionaire who lives in a cave with a young boy. I told you know, <laughs> there's a lot of things there. When you scratch the surface, there's a lot of things you want no, to ask questions right. about. And, and yeah. Spider-Man's a tortured, melancholic superhero. But they changed uh, quite a bit from the comic books. Were you worried about the fans? Because fans are somewhat obsessive and, and protective of the characters they love. Right. And they made some fairly subtle and some not so subtle changes yeah. in the transition, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Well, the, I think the most controversial one that I I can remember was was the web shooters prior to the first movie and would they be uh, organic or would Peter make them because in the comic books he makes them doesn't he, he makes them that's and right. I know Sam thought how's that gonna happen how's a kid gonna and he was essentially a young teen or a very young man yeah. make something which you know big companies couldn't make enough to make so they had that's it come right. out of you organically that's right yeah it didn't seem plausible and also my my argument for that was if he could do that if he was that intelligent scientifically minded couldn't he be wealthy from that and not taking photos yes, for you need to do it yeah I was wondering whether and correct me if I'm wrong I wonder whether they were trying to sort of lure in the teenage market more there and make him kind of like it's being a kind of analogy perhaps I'm looking too deeply here <laughs> for the teenage like transition well no like a boy look here's the thing you go to bed a boy with a high voice a puny chest you wake up you're more muscular and there's stuff all over the floor in your bedroom and I wonder whether it was in any way a tissue based development <laughs> uh, well that's interesting insight masturbation <laughs> Tell me, when was the last time you masturbated <laughs> What's wrong with that question? Amongst <laughs> friends, come on. <laughs> Not recently, I hope. <laughs> now listen, uh, here's what's great in the new movie, and it genuinely is great. I mean, I think it's the best of the three, and they've all been good is that it has not one but two villains this time out. Well, kind of, in a way, maybe even three, you know, yeah. in a borderline kind of way. Uh, and one of them's very uh, early on. It's the Sandman, who, as you know, appeared first in issue number four. Uh, and one... Yes. Yeah, one comes much later on, after my realm of knowledge. Uh, Venom, Venom is, a, is a, a much later character. But during the course of the movie, are we giving too much away if we say that, that your character changes quite a lot as well? No, that's OK to okay. say. What, what happens to Peter Parker in the film? Well, first, in the beginning of the film, public is giving him a lot of attention and praise and he's kind of basking in the glory of being Spider-Man and that creates kind of an uh, like an arrogance and self-importance for him and that starts to create conflict in his relationship with Mary Jane um, and then uh, later when the black suit has an effect on him and, and he finds out some in information that makes him very angry and he, he has a real desire for revenge the black suit intensifies those feelings and he gets a little bit meaner and um, you know, and at the same time, he's kind of uh, very confident, and and, he, you know, and he does. He's got a swagger about him. Yeah, that's a bit of a dance routine. That's right. Uh, the people I was with, some of the girls I was with, they preferred you as the darker character. They thought you were kind of sexy. Really? As yes. The yes. eyeliner. Yeah. Did were you wearing eyeliner? Uh, it's natural. It, it came. Right. It came out naturally yeah, yeah. as I as I became dark. Did you like him that way though? Did you prefer him when he was? I like the real Spider-Man. Uh, you have to say that. My wife and my daughter both fancied you. Really? Yeah, and that's a horrible fool for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that bad way. You can have the daughter. Well, you can't have her, but you know what I'm saying. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I understand. Not both. Yeah. <laughs> right. Leave me something. <laughs> how old is your daughter? Never mind how old she is. <laughs> Too young for Spider-Man. <laughs>
it's kind of odd because you get to do obviously the film is Spider-Man. You're the the lead character in the film, and you're you're the secondary character, I guess. You're pretty much, but you get to do a lot of stunts as well. Yeah. Uh, how many of them do you do yourself, and how much of it is CGI these days? Uh, well, there's a lot of CGI. I, I, I couldn't give you a percentage exactly, but you know, I do some of the stunts. There's a whole stunt team and different stuntmen who specialize in different types of stunts, and then of course the computer animation. And what do you see when you're shooting? Say you're, you know, you're because you spend a lot of the time either um, hanging from things or being dropped from things. Right, right. While, while, while I do get to throw a cinder block in yes, this one. Yes, and thank goodness for that, because I was a bit God. worried about what was going to happen then. Yes. Um, but would you like to do a bit more of the action yourself? No, it's okay. I'd leave it to the boys in spandex. Because... <laughs> <laughs> How is it for you, the first time, let me go back, Toby, the first time you got to put on the Spider-Man suit? Well... <laughs> Did you fill it as well as you had hoped? <laughs> they actually had to give me a dance belt uh, in order to compress certain packaging. Was this because it was uh, too much for the children or just <laughs> too much for the grown-ups? <laughs> uh, too much for you, Toby. Is this, have we got to the root of your back problem? <laughs> Interesting. No, I, it's, you know, because we're making a film for children. You don't want that flying around on a big screen. <laughs> <laughs> have you kept one of the suits? Do you have a spider suit at home? I do not own a suit. What? I know. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I've got two or three, and I've only made some amateur Spider-Man movies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have a suit? I have, no, I don't. I bet you have. Have you got a saucy spider girl skirt? I'm sure it's somewhere in my closet. Because all that sort of stuff you can't buy, can't you? There's Halloween suits and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I've got quite a good high-grade professional uh, one, oh. obviously. Hey, can I ask you a little bit about home life and stuff like that? Is that sure. okay? Because yeah. I believe uh, fairly recently you became a father. Yes, I did. Wow, congratulations Thank on you. that. That's a lovely thing. That's nice. Yeah. Um, how, old is your, how old is your baby? Uh, she's five and a half months. Five and a half months. I so still really a little bit, and she's got the loveliest name. Ruby. Ruby Sweetheart. Ruby Sweetheart. Isn't that a great name? I think that's just a lovely name. Is that uh, is there a reason behind the naming of Ruby Sweetheart? Uh, well, Ruby's just a name we liked. We right. just we picked it. We thought about it a lot and picked that name. And and Sweetheart was uh, was Jen, my fiance's grandmother's, would call her would call Jen Sweetheart all the time and write in cards to to my sweetheart. So you're it's keeping like, the name in the family. Yeah, right? exactly. That's a lovely, yeah. that's a lovely story. Yeah. Do you have any children or any hope of having any in the near future, Kirsten? Are you planning on on breeding? No, not in, <laughs> in the future, yes, but not at the moment. It's a lovely thing, the baby, though, isn't it? Uh, and are you going to have any more? Do you think? Um, I guess it's early days. Isn't yeah, that, isn't possibly. It? It's a little early right now. Shall we have another look at Spider-Man Three? Why not? The some of the scenes are really. Uh, not only exciting, but some of the uh, beautiful cinema that Sam Raimi has created. Uh, yeah, uh, the Sandman being created it's is actually, really it's, poetic to me. It's visual poetry. Yeah, it's I absolutely so beautiful. It, it really is. Me. We don't have that clip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this we'll do just as well. Have a look at this. Wow. Mm. Mm. Did you see that one? You know what? Hmm. I'd like to sing on stage for the rest of my life with you in the first row. I'll be there. Tell me you love me. I love you. I love you so much. I always have. It opens here on May the 4th. It's going to be huge. The premiere, rather unusually, the premiere was in Tokyo, I believe, wasn't it? Did yeah, you the world premiere, yeah. Did you enjoy Tokyo? Oh, I love Tokyo. Have you been there before? I have, but I went a little early so I could go to Kyoto and see the temples. And How nice? I've never been to Kyoto. So, oh, you have to go. It's so beautiful. There. Toby, have you been to Tokyo in the past? Yeah, this was my, uh, I think, sixth time over there. What? Yeah. Why have you been so often? Promoting movies. Do you enjoy the promoting part of it? 
Uh, I love traveling, and and you know I love uh, I love uh, the movies. So it's. So you like, have yeah. you ever had to promote a movie that you really didn't care for much, but you still had to go and talk about it? How do you how do you cope with that? What do you do then? You just fake it. <laughs> really nice. Which film was that, Kirsten? <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, how lovely to meet you both. Thank you so much thank for coming you. on the show. I love seeing your work. Join me in saying thank you to Toby Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I made a documentary with Wayne years ago. Yeah, I was out there with you. Hey, lovely. Thank you so much. Right. Toby Maguire and Kirsten Dunst, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we had a whole